on the left side, they are Arthur Stordam, and we have Kunichan playing Chen, Stark playing ETC in the top lane. There should be someone, uh, maybe unstable, um, playing Tyrande, but nope, he's going. What's that mid? Bot lane is Chibakje uh, playing Malfurion, and finally joining them in the top lane, Andy Landy, who we're gonna call Andy. He's playing a lot of and for the new, improved, hopefully, El Nexo, four, we have Grand PKT three, going down bot. Two, arguably one of the best one. supports in Europe right now. Five. Mid lane Black Scorp, former LDLC member on the Vala. Actually, I want to say Black Scorp's French. Is that so? I remember them I, I seeing one French player because obviously LDLC is a French org, so I thought to myself they must have a French player. And on the announcement, they had a French player. I'm not sure who it was, but Vortex Falcon and Lucifron are completing El Nexo. Ooh, they're in waiting. The top they're lane. waiting for the moment here, and I'm waiting for that blind hook out of Lucifron. It would definitely kill Illidan. Oh, <laughs> the owl does hit, and they know what's going on. Andy Landy still waiting down there. So if he does make a move here, um, I think Lucifer could go for a hook, but nope, he misses it. Still had the minions in the way, so he's gonna stay safe for now. And yeah, so this tri lane, it's, it's about again sending three players to deal with Hammer, stop the push. But even so, to run the ETC Illidan, that's really not the best. But out of the five that Arthurs have, who would you want against that Hammer? You've got three melees on your team? Yeah, three melees. And go three melees going into a hammer, in my opinion, just spells disaster. Oh yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe you could go for a etc Shen just to never die, but it's it's not going to be a good counter push either. Yeah, exactly. You just have to sit there and take the hits, and hope that you're able to defend a little bit. And uh, yeah. So be far loose. they're doing a, an okay job. Um, I mean, Andy Landy is pushing them back. So is ETC, um, just forcing uh, Stitches out of that lane. And they haven't taken too much damage here. So I, I still think they're doing good. Oh, Vortex actually caught out here, being pushed back, but he can heal himself back up. Andy Landy jumping on top of them. It's not gonna work though. The rotation they're missing, down to they're missing that. Uh, they're missing that uh, distance shot here. Grand PKT down bot lane was actually getting pushed out by Seb Kaya's Malfurion. Um, Black Scorp had to had to rotate down, get some damage off, and he's now taken this lane because Rhaegar couldn't stand the beating that he got. And we actually see the two-man roam squad helping out Chen in this mid lane. Oh, there goes the first blood. Stitches does go down with that nice little rotation coming out of Arthas. Yeah, definitely so. Um, and it does turn out that Black Scorp is indeed French, but of course he wouldn't have had any issues when he was in LDLC, so I doubt he has any issues with communication here. And we saw it there. Very nice rotation down, helping his buddy out. And now Grand PKT in this mid lane. Is gonna... Oh, nice move. Kunishana coming in from the back. Falcon catching quite a bit of damage, but he does boost the way. And we have almost the entirety of Arthas being in position here. Oh, there's a nice hook on to Unstable. Andy Lenny coming in to bolster him a little bit. And they do have Stark coming in from the back. That's the first tribute going to Team Arthastordom. And that was quite an easy pickup, to be honest. I thought there would be a little bit more of a fight going on here. But El Nexo, yeah. happy to give this one up. And look at the XP lead as well. It is in favor of Arthas. And they sent Black Scorp down bot to deal with Malfurion. And Vala is on less health. This Sepkaya is playing this lane. Really well, and now he's got the help of Tarande coming in. Land the stun, and Valor's oh, dead. Oh, Black Scorp might be in wall. trouble. Is there another vault available? Wow. No, there isn't. Unstable gets the kill here. That's two kills going to Arthastordom, and they have about half a level advantage. That is not bad at all, and going against what we said here uh, in the draft phase. Gather yeah. tribute. Well, they've got this early roam comp. Um, some the one time I've seen Lost Vikings used well was on this map. They put one in each lane and then had a roam squad that included ETC and Tarande. It's three CCs in one hero. Um, what more do you want? As Kuni Chan is getting caught up and surrounded by three players. Oh, this is gonna be a sandwich here. Unstable comes in, he gets the flying kickoff, but a nice pullback here by Lucifron. Gets the kill onto Kuni Chan. Nice work. And if that tribute pops up and it is there, that should be theirs to take. ETC and Tyrande are coming in. So is Illidan. Maybe they can actually contest it. Yep, Only five Rhaegar's more seconds onto Shen. 
Rico, Oh, nice block here. Did you see what Lucifer did there? Blocking the Sentinel? Oh, that oh. was a really nice move. Now that you mention that as well, the build that Tarande is going for, the level 1 we're used to seeing, the level 4 maybe not so. He actually gone for Searing Arrows, which is Tarande's version of Searing Attacks. Um, obviously it's a level 7 talent for Valor. Tarande gets an improved version at level 4. So... Yeah, they're kind of going for more attack damage. Yeah. A um, little bit more of an assassin style to round it. Ooh, Lucifron getting caught out here. And there's a sandwich. Kuninchan Stark trying to get on top of him. It should be enough here. Black Scop has to run. He wants to survive this next fight. And so does Grand Pekete. He gets out of there. So that should give the next tribute again to Team Arthas Gordon. But it's not coming up for now. They're going for the boss instead. We have a nice clairvoyance here. Uh, used by... Oh no, that was actually a far side. No, same thing. <laughs> same thing <laughs> for Rhaegar. Hammer top lane is just wailing on this fort. Um, she should get that one. She's got a load of mines alongside her as well. Um, and that's going to swing the XP pretty even. They're actually going to grab their own boss here as well. You think but we're going to see a level 10 fight going to be forced here? Uh, it's going to be close, no. but nah, it's, no, no, it's it too risky. Kuni-chan might go and scout this one out, and they're actually going to back away from this. Just moving over is enough for our next side to back away from this one. But this is perfect. I mean, just delaying that boss for quite some time. Oh, there's the pushback onto Falcon, but a nice hook onto Stark. Can they push Falcon back enough? I think they can. First aid is used, but there is that ultimate by Andy. ETC is dropped as well. And Black Scorp. Oh, they can actually go for Illidan here. Perfect CC here out of Vortex. Yeah, it, it was. It. That was a good fight that El Nexo really needed to win. They got the 1 for 2 trade in their favor, and it swung the XP in their lead. They are the team to hit level 11 first. Now, the Tarande build. So. A while ago, um, Bakery from SK was speaking uh, with me and Snitch, I believe, and they tested something out about a DPS Tarande build. You take Ranger's Mark at 1, Searing Attacks 2, it's basically this one, and I predict that this Tarande is going to go stun at 13 and 16. If used correctly and everything is timed to perfection, you're going to be able to burst down Lucifron here on Stitches in probably about 2 seconds just to run day alone. I'm still a little bit worried about this. They actually kind of needed that CC just because we have multi-shot and strafe on Vala. Who's gonna stop Vala now? It's gonna come uh, down to ETC and Shen no, maybe. It's, it's still gonna be Tarande. You, you, still got, you still take stun at level 13 and 16. So you have the increased um, range, the increased radius. The, the, the potential's still there but yeah this is a great choice for Valor, for Black Scorp, going for the strafe, adding so much more damage and knowing he can't be interrupted. Especially in this position right now, I mean, they're in a really, really nice spot. This is going to be a really vital tribute to deny. Two tributes uh, go in the way of Arthur Stroydom. If they get this one, they could push their advantage, or actually go for an advantage. Here. And there's the, there is the heroic out of Andy. Vortex is being pushed back, but they're not going for him straight away. Going for Lucifer instead, but he's being healed up. Nice successful healing coming in just in time. Vortex is quite low, but so is this Mr. Illidan. And Black Scope does get out of there. Did pop his heroic as well. Everyone is quite low on this, but they're still pushing this back. Drum pick and take, dropping quite low. Illidan does fall finally. And That's there nice. is Stark going for that marsh pit. Getting the kill on Stitches and Grand Pekete, but he needs to get out. Nice knife arm strike, did some work on him. An unstable does pop. Wow. So oh, far, 3 for 3. And Chen! Wow. 4 for 3. Not bad. And they get the tribute. Really nice move here. What a weird fight, to be honest. Yeah, it was strange. It really shows, goes to show you what holding on to your heroic can do at the end there. Um, the mosh pit coming out from ETC, saving it just to to the end of the fight, not wasting it early on. Um, they were able to get a little bit more from it, but they may have to hand this tribute over as Vortex is going for it. Andy is going to have to try and go for this Malfurion too. They're going to be able to deny this. Also from uh, now on, I think we should call uh, Kuni-chan, Kuni-chan. Chen. Yeah, Kuni Chen. I think that works. I think that works. Speaking of oh, him, he's jumping in. Coming in. Oh, Kuni Chen getting quite a bit of damage onto him. 
and his heroic wasn't up. He's dropping so low, and they're gonna go for the steal on the bruisers. What a nice move, and this is gonna buy him a little bit of space to actually grab that tribute. There might be some denying going on, but you can see Black Scorp and Lucifron blocking any sentinels, so they get that uh, second tribute here. They do indeed, and they're gonna go straight down. Falcon, Lucifron pummeling on these bottom towers. They're gonna take the XP lead even further. Their Bruiser camp is up. Black Scorp's taking their easy camp. They're gaining so much good control. And something that was typical of El Nexo if, when they were El Nexo was that their early game wasn't the greatest, but yep. their team fighting was insane. It was pinpoint. It was so good for them. But this time, their really early game wasn't too great. They kind of pulled it back a little bit, and now we're starting to see team fights. We're starting to see them pull it back in true Alexo fashion. Yeah, it's kind of like a Tempo Storm. I think uh, the NA team also has a little bit of trouble early on. Then they usually win in the late game. So they they kind of share that similarity here. Yeah, um, when Tempo Storm played over here. They weren't used to the meta um, in the EU go for. Their early game suffered because of it. And then it was their team fight that pulled them all the way through to the finals. In fact, they beat LDLC. Uh, that was Falcon and Black Scorp on their way to winning uh, or getting second in that cup. Next tribute is coming up and looks like El Nexo, they can push him back quite a bit and have a nice little adventure go going into that tribute. We still have Sentinels available, but look at that placement. Black Scorp, Lucifer, and Vortex blocking the Sentinel, and they get the final tribute. What a move! Really yeah, nice they, blocking. They knew that Arthas couldn't touch them. It was 16 to 15. Anyone in their right mind wouldn't trade that. And there it was. Lucifer missing the hook there, unfortunately. But either way, they're just going to power straight down this mid lane. Five versus three here, because... ETC and Tarande, they have no wave clear. This is a problem with this composition. Their wave clear is more or less ETC and Malfurion. And when your wave clear comes down to that, you're going to have trouble pushing back these waves, especially when you're cursed. So they're eating it quite a bit, and they're facing off against the level 16 talents, which are imposing presence on Uther and Stitches. We have Blood for Blood on Valor and Rhaegar, and Executioner is taken here by Sergeant Hammer. So quite a bit of damage. Oh, Kunishan is getting stunned. There comes the heal and the barrel roll, but Vortex just jumps out of there, there comes the strafe, and she gets the perfect strafe off, Star catching quite a bit of damage, Illidan comes in, he's there a little bit too late, Vortex should get out of this as well, but maybe with a good body block they can do it, and ETC, what a great marsh pit, getting all three of them, but Malfurion drops, and ETC is just so completely out of position, going for the kill here, three heroes down, only Uther goes down in that fight for her. Team El Nexo, what a perfect push. Yeah, they timed it perfectly, they got the hook to start things off and just snowballed in that fight from there on out. Once the tranquility from Malfurion was down, Illidan couldn't go any further, nor could Tarande. ETC tried his best to pull it back in their favor, holding on to that mosh pit again, but that one, he got the three-man mosh pit, but there was no follow-up for it. ETC, uh, no, sorry, Illidan couldn't dive in. They just couldn't keep going on in that fight. And there's the steal on the boss. I don't think they're gonna go for the juggler quite yet. They're gonna grab their own boss and then see what they can do from there. Um, they know, okay, level 16 is now available for Arthas, so maybe they're just gonna try to push level 20 as fast as they can and then try to do something. But looks like it's uh, Stitches just going <laughs> going for the boss by himself. Everyone else is helping out here. Yeah, oh no, they're gonna they're grab this one as well. Um, they've got a pretty nice minion wave up top. There's another one on its way. Once this boss goes, they more, more than likely just group up in that top plane. Probably steal away the easy camp as well, just to help with the siege. Um, unless, of course, ETC goes there beforehand. He may do, but it's way too late now. Black Scorp's gonna gain control of this vision first. The rest of his team gonna follow. And this is gonna be a keep, at least. It's already exposed. Yeah, uh, especially with those sea giants being taken there. Um, this is a really nice, really nice combination. Maybe they're gonna wait a little bit for these sea giants uh, to actually capture these sea giants. Oh, not really. Going for it straight away. It means they're ahead of the boss. You really want them behind the boss, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. They're uh, solid two levels ahead, and if they get this keep, they're gonna have their level 20, and that should be sufficient uh, to just scare off Arthas. Yep, and they're going straight for this. They get the hook onto Stalk, but he's not the guy you want to go for. Anyone but him, I think. Even you could probably burst down Chen right now. 
um, in the current state that he's in. They get the keep, they get the tower. Uh, about a quarter of their way to 19, but they're going to try and keep going here. They've got the Siege Giants, they've got the boss, they've got Valor for DPS, Hammer is sieged up. You've got to think that once this shield goes, Arthas, they have to engage on this. Yeah, boss will drop here pretty soon. So far, no one really make a move. Now Lucifron actually caught in there. But he gets out and the Starfall doing quite a bit of work here. And really pushing them out. The Kunishan coming in from the back. He drops so low. He missed that hook. And oh, you see getting Vortex in there. But Andy Landy drops. And Stark should fall here as well. They're all going for him. And we have the entirety of El Nexo still alive, just pushing them back. They're gonna go for the court and they're gonna get the kill here. Going for that 1 0 versus Arthur Spartan. And yeah. there it is. GG. Pretty convincing from El Nexo. Um, really nice classic El Nexo style. They fell behind in the early game, but their team fight really pulled them through. Gaining control of the tributes. They were 1 0 down and then. Took three, I think it was. The third one was really nice, solid team play, blocking the Sentinel, as you picked up on um, earlier, meaning that they had a safe passage to get that tribute, engage in the fight at the right time on that tribute. Really, really nice play from LNX. So they've got a good, good path ahead of them. But in order to get to that path, they've got to win this series first. Left side this time around, our blue team from Russia. They are Arfis Stroidem, and we have Shabakshe playing Illidan. Stark playing Uther, uh, Kuni, <laughs> Kunichan playing Rega, and Unstable playing Vela, and their last player joining them just now, Andy Landy playing Nazibo. El Nexo on the other hand, they're on the right hand side looking to take this series 2-0 in this HPL. Falcon top lane, as I suspected, solo laning up there, and they're gonna have Tassada, Malfurion, Tarande, and Stitches going for this early game. As I was saying, hook into stun into snare would be something amazing that could come out from this. They're actually gonna go for the five man mid, but that gets spotted straight away by the Oracle. Yeah, just gonna try this for a sec here and then go down into their lane, not to miss any XP. And they see, okay, Illidan actually moving over there. I don't know if he gave away his position. Or might have been close, there's the hook, but uh, doesn't do all that much. And they're going to return into their lanes here pretty soon. At least I would hope so. They want to lose that XP early on. Yeah, so what they're trying to do here is just push out the lane. I'm surprised they're getting pushed against when you have Tassadar and Stitches. But Stitches is able to get down here. I think they missed one minion. But even so, Lucifron, he's going to have a bit of trouble early on. Because he's one versus two for now. He should get joined by his teammates in a minute. And again, yeah, Mephure and Odin waiting to go down there. Ooh, and Black Scorp getting quite a nice shot off onto Stark. Oh. There's the there's the stun yeah. and a nice follow up out of Mephure and rooting him in place. That's first blood. This Going is like what we saw on Cursed Hollow as well. Um, I think it was in the Dignitas series. We had Stitches, Malfury, and Tarande. No, Stitches, ETC, Tarande. It's. So much CC, but strong. so little damage, but it works because you're able to CC for so long. And once you've got that hunter's mark down from Tyrande, it just gives you so much more opportunity and potential for kills. And we saw it there onto Uther to open things up. They've got this bot shrine rotating to mid, try and kill Stalk again. And, and there's the root, and once again, he should fall. Yep, there it goes down. Just a storm to follow it up, like a sherry on the top. Early game rotations on Dragonshire win games, and El Nexo having a strong early game for once. We saw Arthas have a strong roam squad on Cursed Hollow, loose from missing that hook, but El Nexo showing them who's boss right now. Two yeah, roams, kind of two scared kills. for Arthas, to be yeah. honest. Um, so if El Nexo has a strong early game, what the heck are they gonna do late game? <laughs> and ooh, yeah. Queen Chan is trapped in here, Lucifron going in from the side. Popping that totem, but is it gonna help? I doubt it is. There's a sandwich. Can they heal? They do oh get wow, there's a heal from Stark. Maybe they can turn this around. Black Scorp pops. And Lucifron is in trouble as well. A great zombie wall to uh, drop him in place. And he falls as well. What a nice turnaround here for Arthas. Three That's words. Two to kills. Three words to explain Dragonshire. Early game rotations. El Nexo had some great ones, but that that was really on point from Arthas. When all hope was lost, Kuni Chan was one versus two, probably screaming down to TeamSpeak or whatever they used. Guys, guys, help! They came yeah, to his aid. That was a perfect timing. Stock might pop here. Come on, get another heal in. Yeah, should be fine. Just um, Andy Landy gave him a little bit of support there on the right side. But yeah, as you said, that was a perfect timing uh, for the supports to come in, heal him back up, and uh, then turn this around and get the double kill. 
And that actually gives him a little bit of an edge here. Uh, half a level advantage. It's not too much, but just a little bit. And gave him control of the dragon. Uh, at least the dragon shrines. Maybe Lucifer can retake control of Bot Shrine. Yeah, just in time. Uh, Tesla, of course, is one of the best mid laners on Dragonshire. It's probably his best map. Yep, and they get the hook on. Oh, that Lunar Flare as well was perfectly timed. Usually... And we have triple healing ward, by the way. Uh, Tassadar, Tyrande, yes. and Malfurion taking that, of course. And Amplified Healing on Stitches. This is gonna make Stitches so hard to kill. I'm surprised we didn't actually see a shield out on someone. Um, either Malfurion or Tyrande. Usually when you have the opportunity for three healing wards, someone takes a shield. But they haven't gone for it in this situation. We actually see fresh corpses on... Well, we actually see a dead hammer is what we see in top lane. But fresh corpses on Nazebo is something we really don't see a lot. Yeah, that's level interesting. Seven. It's usually Mule or Gidbin. Yeah, uh, Gidbin seems to be one of the more uh, solid options here, but yeah. he wants to go for a little more zombie damage. Maybe going for more pushing potential with that. I don't know, is, is that the, the choice here, or just a little bit more damage out of the CC, I'm, but I'm you, not should, sure. you just rely on the CC itself. Just to be CC, yeah. Um, it's not like they need more damage, they have Valen Azebo Illidan. Um, like, I know, I feel like Gidbin would have been so much better, just because it's Gidbin. <laughs> but anyway, enough of Nazebo talents. Merc camps across the map. Illidan soloing. That's uh, Sebkaya taking the hard camp. Grand PKT and Falcon, they're going to take their own easy camp. They did lose Bot Shrine, but they could happily try and retake this one. Three versus two for now, but rotations, the engage won't... The, the rotation won't come down because there's oh, the engage. Oh, Kunishan's not Kunishan. getting the help this time. There he pops. Yeah. Andy Landy should get out of there. But Kunishan just caught out. He didn't want to go towards Falcon because he was afraid of that shotgun. And shotgun blast to the face does not do your beauty good. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Loose from missing a hook in the mid lane there. It would have been on Seb Kaya, so he's pretty slippery. Arthas, they're going to hit 10 first. Only by a little bit, but even so, they're going to hit 10. We should see Metamorphosis. Bloodlust. Ooh, interesting. I haven't seen Bloodlust in ages. And there is Reign of Vengeance, of course, on Valor. As much as I love this, there's going to be so much of an opportunity for um, El Nexo to either team fight or siege up. Because when Bloodlust is on cooldown, it's the longest cooldown of all heroics, I think, at two minutes. Actually, Unstable doing some great Micron to PKT in the top lane. Um, but Bloodlust, two minute cooldown against the hammer. Like, if you Bloodlust, and then they're just able to disengage. And speaking of Bloodlust, there it is in top. Um, Vortex still getting away though. They got nothing out of it. This is what I'm saying. They now can't fight for two minutes. They got something down bot though. A double kill. Metamorphosis came out, I believe, there. Grabbing the two kills, but... As a and team, they have control of both like... shrines. Uh, Stitch is in position and Malfurion is joining to stop yeah. Kunishan from channeling. Uh, but they do have support now. Andy Landy and Shabaksha can move in and... Lucifron has to pop his rogue, is still kind of zoned out. Kunisha might actually go for this, and Shibaksha is still okay. on the hunt, and the Dragon Shrine uh, has been taken in top lane. Oh, just in the nick of time here for our Naxo. Yeah. Just about. Arthas, though, I wouldn't be surprised if we go see Illidan solo his easy camp. But hard is something which we haven't seen contested yet, which I expect to see in the near future. Kunichan, his job literally just seems to be sit on that bot shrine and do nothing else. All has been doing, and they're actually going to go for this hard camp. They do far sight the shrine above them, and they may, in fact, go for this because otherwise, they're giving up. Oh, it's only Shabapsha, he might get surprised. Oh, he's getting out of there. That's too dangerous. He needs his entire team here if he wants to take this. And they're coming in, but they're taking their dear time. Oh, is there a steal onto Black's Corp? And can he do it? There's nope. the hook, he pulls him out, and Black's Corp gets that bruiser camp. But Shibasha does make his escape. Well, Furin wasn't quite so lucky here. <laughs> there are just kills everywhere on the map. Um, it's kind of hard to follow, to be honest. It, yeah, it's 11, a little bit more like like drops in StarCraft um, than a regular game. Minutes. Usually you have all teams just rallying up, staying as a team the entire time. But here, oh, nice move here. Good, really good hook on Kukunichan. And he drop out. There's a Nazibo rolled onto Lucifron. And he's being, oh, he's being pushed back here. They're going to get that kill. Won't get anyone else though. Kunishan has to get out of that fight. He's incredibly low. But Vortex and everyone else, they're just retreating out of this. Don't want to lose any more. And Falcon is in trouble. Dubakshay going on top of him. A good shield coming out, but it's not going to save him. There comes that final blow. 
And he does fall. Martian might be in trouble himself though. Can he get out? Yeah, he can. Yeah, and it just goes to show you that if one team... Oh, they're actually still going on here. Kunichan very low at the front. He gets taken down. Stork should probably back away from this one. Tranquility has been popped. Vala is joining, but she could... No. They could re-engage with the Vala here, but it's pretty risky. Andy Lendy, once it gets the Tyrande, you've got to think this is a kill. Oh, yeah, it should be. It should be. There's the Storm and... Ooh, Stalk. Nice follow-up here. Really good move. Getting two kills. Tesla and Tyrande of this. They should be able to push the bot lane now, but there's a good hook on the stock. No follow-up possible on the Grand Pekateus in, in position. Sergeant Hammer will join them pretty soon. But it looks like they're just gonna go for the dragon. Going for the dragon, maybe split pushing this. I think it's still a viable option. Ten seconds yep. on Tyrande and Tassadar. They they're should go for a split push. They're at least gonna get these two towers mid, or try to. Um, just try and open up. In fact, the Dragon Knight's gonna go top. It's the exposed mm. fort. I'm not too sure how I feel about this. I think they could have got... Yeah, they're coming back towards mid. Get yeah, these like two this. mid towers here, and then rotate to bottom where you've got uh, Seb Kaya providing pressure, and then get that boot to the fort. It's a you want to open my possibilities for later on. Yeah. You don't want to win and go for the fort straight away. You just want to open my possibilities to give stronger options later on with uh, some more split pushes. Talking about split push, they're going for the bot lane again. And Dragon is also following them. Oh, Grand Pekete is in trouble and he pops. Great move here by Chef Kaya and Kunichan. They There's the hook. the hook onto Stork. He has oh, the mind storm up now. dangerous. Blood. And there goes down. Lucifer does get away here for now and Uther does fall. Falcon and Lucifer turning this around now with the help of Uther. But I think uh, Arthas should get away here. They're all quite high on energy. Uh, only unstoppable in trouble there, but the hook does miss. And they will get out of that fight. They will. Those 16 indeed. talents are up. Blood for yep. blood. Triple blood for blood, to be honest. Yep, and again, this is just the whole increasing chasing potential, increase in damage. They've already got so much damage, they're just adding to it. Um, they could just blood for blood and then just let Illidan do his thing on hammer. Um, same for Stitches, in theory. They could just chase down Stitches, focus him, and then it's going to be 5v4. Pretty easy, easy enough to run, days easy to burst. Um, and as I said earlier, this Rhaegar going for more damage thing. I said damage, expecting something maybe like Feral Lunge, Blood for Blood. I certainly didn't expect Bloodlust to come under damage category, but oh, yeah. it hasn't really worked too well. They used it there, but didn't do too much with it. Valor wasn't in range, I don't believe. It was only really for the speed up for Uther to be able to get some stuns down. We are blessed. This game is definitely not over. Um, Alexa has all, all the possibilities in the world to make a comeback happen. And... Um, I think we're just gonna have a little bit more of a wait once those shrines actually pop again. Maybe a little bit of a push here on this bottom fort, but um, it's just gonna be pushed by El Nexo on top lane as well. So I think both teams will get a fort out of this. And well, just a solid level They're advantage go for, for now. They're gonna keep as well. Oh, you and think I really gonna like get the keep here? Uh, yeah, they've got the damage from Vala, Illidan, Rhaegar just popping in and out of. Wolf form, are they gonna keep going or do they okay they want to back, they don't want to lose oh, okay. keep. Yeah, stitches and everyone wow, they're, they're just hostily back. The oh the bruisers uh, might not actually get a kill here. If they're fast enough, well they're yeah. probably gonna let it kill it. Just go for the bruisers, neutral bruisers in bot lane. And get control of the shrines. Bot shrine is already in their control. They should stick around though, since El Nexo's not waiting. So Nazebo doesn't have any escapes. He took fresh uh, dead rush, sorry at level 13. He's going for a zombie build, um, meaning he doesn't have the sprint, so if they get hold of him, he's gonna fall very quickly. Yeah, this is just all-out damage. They just wanna <laughs> waltz over El Nexo. Yeah. Um, they're gonna have to retaliate by taking this top shrine. Leaving Rhaegar down here isn't great. We're at that stage now where rotations are key. You really need to stay as five. Kunichan isn't faced by this. Okay, moving now. Um, yeah, he's impressed if, now. Yeah, uh, he needs to watch out for hooks as well. Yeah. Always trying to stay behind that tower line, but um, he should have watched out. And ooh, Andy Lenny coming from top. Nice, nice zombie wall. And they're gonna run after Hammer. Go get them, boys, and do no damage at all. Yeah, but as we said, I mean, Arthas, they're not really in a position where they can actually retreat out of this. They're totally focused on to damage. So the moment they actually drop in levels and get behind for some reason, um, they actually run into a lot of trouble. 
And there comes oh. the hook onto Kunichan, but Bloodlust is popped, and they're just dishing out that damage, but oh. Kunichan is quite low. He should get out of this if he's safe. Sergeant Hammer does drop earlier on, and Black Scott pushed out of this as well. He should fall, and Vortex needs to watch out. Does he have like, does he have his getaway? Nope, it's not up. It's not up, but he does mount up, so should get out of here as well. And then he dismounts and walks into a Valor. Luckily oh. gets killed by Malfurion, but Lucifron, he's getting CC'd. They do miss the zombie war, gets taken down straight away. Sepkai are following through, grabs that kill, and now Tasta wants some of this action. Three for zero, and they still have some decent health here. Sepkai needs to watch out though. Yeah, he was the only one that was a little bit lower. I don't think they're gonna push this keep too hard. They still have five heroes, but with the dragon, they can they can go for it. But without the dragon, that would have been end. so well, crazy. They, try and end, I think. they probably won't. But with stitches down for 25 seconds, they could just try and blow someone up. And that's what they're trying to do here on the Grand PKT. Sepkai are going deep. But now they realize they can only do so much damage to them, they're gonna back away and try and get this mid fort. They want to hit 20 soon. Yeah, and with 20 to 18, um, I think they have definitely have a good chance to take this game. They're in a nice position to take this mid fort. Um, it's not going to give them quite enough XP to go for that level 20, but it's going to give them well on their way. Nice little loot there onto Andy. They still have that dragon. That's definitely yeah. a force to be reckoned with. Dragon is now out. Their easy camp is up. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them try and take this. No, they'll, they'll take this, then go to their own hard camp. Lucifron, though, he wants in on this. Bloodlust still down for 15 seconds. It's one of the problems, but they're still going to fight. Oh, Divine Hurricane coming down, but not doing all that much. Alternate, um, Alexa just <laughs> getting out of there. And the Starfall, yeah, pushing, pushing Arthas back. They can't really fight like this. They still have some great blood And Shepakeya going on to Lucifron, but he has a shield on top of him. There's the Bloodlust. And once again, focusing on Lucifer might be not the best idea, but oh, oh, wow. wow, to Ronda and Mephirin with the double kill so quickly, just on top of each other. And there does Stitches go down. Falcon also on the retreat, it's not gonna work though. There's so much damage that's being put out here by Arthas. I think they're gonna go for the kill here. Still have a little bit of health left, and yep. just uh, this, some seed shines to help out as well. This is gonna be game, Arthas. Yeah. Gets back here, one to one versus El Nexo. Provided they don't screw up here. Um, oh, they shouldn't. But yeah, they really shouldn't. Margin for error here is very minimal. Um, Passes are doing his best to try and shield this. But yeah, he yeah, can only he do so much. He can just dance around here. It doesn't really matter whatever he's doing. Even double storms don't do anything against this. Might get a kill out of this. Stark is actually quite low, but it's not going to matter. There is the return of Arthas Stroidem versus El Nexo, one to one. Yeah, and we have a third game on our hands. It's now a best of game draft alone. Arthas obviously have the upper hand. We know how weak El Nexo's early game is. And on a map like Black Hearts, it can be forgiven, but it just depends on how many coins you give up early on. Yeah, and here they are, our Spaniard. Our Spaniards, El Nexo in the blue trunks on Blackheart's Bay. We have Lucifron on ETC, Vortex playing Nazebo, Black Scorp is playing Stitches, and Grand Pekate is playing Malfurion. Down here in the bot lane, just solo, crying by himself, it's Falcon on Sergeant Hammer. And that bird of prey, Mr. Falcon, gonna be going up against Unstable playing Valor, trying to block these minions. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The effort you actually put into doing this is so not worth it. I just find it safer just to sit in lane and more relaxing. But I also wear Cooney Channel on Rhaegar. Andy dodging out that hook on the throw. Three man push out in top lane. He's joined by Stalk on Uther and Sebkaya on the Tarande. They're actually going to go for Black Scorp, try and CC him down, but not too much done. Yeah, not going to work. Uh, they have four heroes there. We'll, we'll see a, re a redistribution here again. I think um, I think Arthas will move down to mid lane. Yeah, they should do once. It's a pretty even push that neither team will lose too much from leaving here. And in fact, they're gonna try and hold Black Scorp back, but again, won't do too much. It's gonna be a two on two for this chest. Rhaegar already on it. They're gonna get a good amount of coins. Oh, nice three. move here by Lucifron, stealing two coins yeah. at least. Uh, but I think they did lose quite a few here in this bottom chest, yeah. Uh, Sergeant Hammer not even going for it. It was too risky. So that's a lot of coins already going over to Team Arthas. Uh, let's check it out. They have 8 coins versus 2. So that's just those yeah. 2 that were stolen by ETC. That's not a lot. 
this was something I was worried about about Onexo because now this early game can really snowball, but they want a three. This is eight coins down bot lane right now, and unstable with five. Oh, this is so risky. Unstable is in, is in trouble. There comes another heal, but it's not going to be enough. That's a five point steal. What a nice move. And first blood going to El Nexo. You can't be so overextended with five coins and you only see three players on the map. They saw Falcon in the bot lane. They saw Nazebo top, they saw Malfurion. You've got you to could think see to yourself. that Rhaegar yeah. wasn't, wasn't the safer spot, I mean... You've, you've also got to think to yourself, are where are they? It's 1 minute 30 in, there are no camps on the map, where could they possibly be? Right now, I've got a bounty upon my head. Surely they're coming down to kill me, surely I should play safer. But hey, yeah. well, and we're seeing... get the level 4s in. We're seeing and... the DPS to Rande build again, searing arrows with Ranger's Mark, I really like this. But... Multi shot coming out of Valor. Not a big fan. I really think auto attack would have been a ton stronger here. And she's going for a siphoning arrow. Um, just getting a little bit more health in. Uh, which will be desperately needed here, of course. Um, uh, it's gonna limit her uh, limit her damage output a little bit at least. Ready to rock. Certainly so. Sepkai so back in, not too sure why he's full HP, maybe just needs a little bit more mana in there. And finally, we're going to see Lucifron and Co. hand in these coins. They're going to get CV'd. The Sentinel will come across. It'll only stop Stitches, but they have enough. They did their easy camp. They did their pirate camp. They've got 10 coins. Yeah, that's gonna be the first bombard. set them up perfectly. Yeah. And usually you don't think, okay, first blood, it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, even getting the first two early kills doesn't matter that much. But if you steal five coins, that's actually a big deal. And they made it work here. Yeah, they did. Thrall in this top lane is forcing Vortex out. You can see one of the big plus sides to Thrall is that he's able to sustain himself. He only really needs mana to help him because he has his self heal. Tarande joining up here. This could be a kill. They need to land the stun. They don't. They're going to get the snow, the snare just about missed. Yeah, a little bit too late up here uh, in top Ooh, lane. They're going to get the return they handed. Yeah. Finally getting that, uh, getting those coins turned in. Ooh, and Kuning Chan had nine coins. That was a little bit dangerous. Usually you want to kind of spread them out on um, both teams. Level 7 talents are coming in. Stitch is going for Toxic Gas um, yeah, again. That's, and that's a strange one, considering he hasn't gone for Slam. Yeah, interesting. So, um, definitely not going for Gorge, of course. Um, which is not too surprising. Um, we have Enduring Growth and... The mule on Nazibo, interesting choice, really cool choice to be honest here on, on Black House Bay. This should be mid fork going down, or maybe not. Sepkai is gonna get caught out. Oh yeah, he's gonna go down for sure. Oh, unless Kunisha comes in with a perfect heal, but is it gonna be enough? I don't think it is. There comes the hook, and Sepkai does fall here. Andy Landy and Kunisha will be safe though. At least they should be. Lucifer pushing him back. Whoa, what a nice move. But Kunisha coming in and healing him back up. Lucifron has to watch out. Blackstone does as well. Lucifron trying to body block him as good as he can, but I don't think they're gonna get the kill here. Nope. Not pick a T from coming in to help out. And Lucifron getting another hook in. Yeah, they're definitely uh, doing a good job here. Both teams are, really. Uh, two kills for El Nexo so far. Yeah, I. I've seen a lot of Malfurions recently go for this um, Enduring Growth at level 7. Uh, increases the duration. It, it, yes, it increases your healing. But I feel like being able to CC from range, getting Eloon's Grace, is just so much more beneficial because you're not only able to kill multiple targets because, say in a team fight, you've got your Tranquility healing, say your backline, you're still able to throw a heal down on your frontline because of that range increase. And being able to snare from range as well is so great because you risk a lot being so up close and personal with your enemy. And Andy is going to get up close and personal as he gets hooked. Yep, and he's going to be caught out here. There's a Starfall for a uh, little bit of damage control, but Andy Landy is so incredibly low and he's Three. walking through that gas. It's not going to help out. Shepakaya is also quite low there on the left side. And there's the Gargantuan. Are yeah, you I saw kidding that. me? Okay, that is really weird. Shepakaya is caught out though. Great zombie wall coming out of uh, coming out of Nazebo here. And they get control of the doubloons. On the right side, Andy Landy making his escape. He does get away. And so does everyone else here. But uh, losing to Rana in that fight, a little bit unnecessary to be honest. Taking that really risky route um, through the constrictions there was not necessary at all. 
Yeah, they can fight again in about, what, 40 seconds, maybe a little bit more, 55, for the Starfall to come back off. So they need to play safe until then, of course, though. El Nexo, they're going to get a hand in, not just yet. Falcon is going to get stopped. Lucifer on here, though, should be able to defend Subkaya. Is able to do so. Falcon gets the hand in. So this bombardment will take Midfort down. And then it will turn its attention to top lane, I believe. I think El Nexo, they're just going to play it safe. Um, just use the mule to um, regain control. Always have their forts at some good yep. amount of health. And then just try Speaking to win the health. blue games. Oh, jeez. CC train, that was snare into stun into damage. It's it a really them. great five man push here, and they have the Clairvoyance up, just checking uh, for anyone to come in. Uh, this might not be Ford, but it's still gonna be a lot of XP coming their way. And Grand PKT, he needs to watch out, there's the Bloodlust. Can he make his, uh, can he make his getaway happen? Where's that CC? It's not coming in just yet, and there's Black Scarf helping out. And Starfall like, coming in. Black Scarf needs to watch out though, he's not in a good spot there, up there. And there comes a good hook onto Kunichan, can he get away? The Bakaya quite low once again, but looks like everyone will get away from this fight. Arthas need to control their impulse to hit that Archeon Rhaegar. They need to try and control the Bloodlust. Yep. Uh, because they're Bloodlusting for one person, it's not great. They weren't even able to get close to Grand PKT and get the uh, CC down. The light shines As on us all. Let's take a look at those 13 talent sprint from the Zebo this time round. No zombies here, get out of here except Gargantuan of course. Relentless on stitches this tank build. Life Seed again on Malfurion going for this healing style. How what do you think about the Gargantuan to be honest? I, it, I find it's it kind of weird. Um, because you've got the Sundering, you've got the Lunar Flare, you've got Divine Hurricane, Reign of Vengeance and Valor's having to vault out of that one. Okay, true. That's true. Yeah, there's just so much potential to interrupt it that there's no point risking it. I find it kind of weird that so far Arthas have not used Thundering and didn't really get any good Divine Storms off. That's the two skills that they need to rely on in order to put out the Bloodlust and really dish out the damage. It's not going to work otherwise. If they They're going to need that CC. If they had Bloodlust up there, that was perfect. They got the stun onto Falcon. Uther had right of passage to get in there. Double stun coming out from Terrande, but they are split. Roll was split from the rest of his team. Of course, he could have done the same back, but again, it would have been a bit of a waste of the Sundering. Bloodlust up in 10. They're even on talents, 14 to 13. This is where Arthas are going to probably try and get in here and find some ground. And Unfortunately, Malfurion mounts up in time to get away from the action in mid. Let's take a quick look at coins. We have four on the side of El Nexo 9 on Arthas. Arthas could go in hand in, but it looks like they want to go towards boss. ETC does have stage dive. Stitch is making his way up. They can burst this boss very quickly because of course Ranger's Mark, Searing Arrows, True Shot Aura. They There's can burst so much damage. So quickly. Yeah, so much single target damage. But chests are up as well and it looks like they're gonna take this chest down bottom, trade it for the boss. Yeah, El Nexo just doing what I said, just going straight on for map objectives, going for map control, Getting, for, getting all the balloons they can and just trying to avoid fights. I mean, they still have that one level advantage, but I don't think they're really confident in taking any fights. If they, if they can avoid it. But Lucifer caught out, and there is that massive damage output we were talking about. So much DPS, he just falls in no time. And that's not a position you want to be in as Nazebo. As Nova says, one shot, one kill. That was one ult, one kill. And it worked so well. They get the stun on Seb onto Falcon. Hook on Seb Kai. He's now snared up. Let's get out. Yeah, he drops a clip fast. Andy Landy also pushed out there. He should fall as well. But there's a great CC, great Divine Hurric uh, Divine Sword, but it's not gonna be enough. I think they're all retreating in wrong directions here. Unstable goes down. So might Thrall. Andy Landy is incredibly low as well. Uh, another Napalm and he might fall, but they're returning. Going back and he will get out of that fight. But that's one for two. El Nexo really, really also taken off in these team fights. It was a fight where Bloodlust wasn't used again. For some reason, Kunichan was split away from the rest of his team. He was in the top lane while they got engaged upon in mid. Wasn't able to get the Bloodlust used, so... Plus side, they've got it off cooldown for whenever they want to use it. Negative, it wasn't used then, 
and the way no. it's been in the past, they'll probably use it as an impulse again and not be patient for the Starfall, for the Reign of Vengeance, and for the Divine Storm. Yeah, so theoretically, they have the better team for team fights, but yeah. they're not making the full use of it. And if they're continuing to do, play like play like this, it's not gonna it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. They're already down the level, um, and it's gonna be harder and harder for them to catch up. It is indeed. They're gonna try and even out the numbers by taking this hard camp. Elnexo respond by taking the bottom hard camp. Of course, they've got a hand in as well, which is pummeling away at mid gate for now. As yeah, they have again um, eight coins. So eight coins available. Uh, looks like Arthas wants to turn in. Wow. Oh, Lucifer dropping once again. That marsh pit not doing all that much. And Black Scorp making a run for it. He's gonna make it, but Vortex might not be so lucky. Oh, there comes the uh, good hook on the stock. Great, great Starfall. Getting quite oh. a bit of damage down onto Fog. And he does drop in the Reign of Vengeance. What a move. The Gargantuan tried to hit from the back, but everyone should make their getaway happen. And will they get that last that Malfurion that just runs away in the wrong direction? This is not your home turf, Malfurion. You need to watch close. out. Is but Val I think he's gonna to get, get his chase. getaway. Okay, Val is going to defend. Good, good. I was going to say, chasing would have wasted a little bit of time there, I, I feel. But this top lane, the gate has been taken down by the boss that was there earlier. This bombardment will take the mid fort and then go down towards bot, unless Arthur's take it beforehand, which it looks like they're going to do here. Arthur's are pulling sure they up go. their uh, triple blood for blood again, and of course, imposing presence on Uther also taken, and the shooting star onto Ronda. So yep. they have a lot of potential for really, really great team fights, and it worked out in that last one, that's for sure. But they need to continue this. They need to catch up in levels. It's only only a quarter of a level, so they definitely caught up yep. quite a bit and um, made a made a comeback possible now. And do they have enough to hand in again? They need 14. They have 15. They have 18. They have 18. I didn't see Vala. Should be fine. Should but be fine to hand in. They even go for more coins. Yeah. Um, El Nexo know they have 18, so Arthur's just predicting that El Nexo would be there ready and waiting. Because right now, uh, we're kind of taking fights on Arthas's ground. Like the last fight, they just melted ETC straight away. Yeah, they want to wait for their heroics to be up again. Yeah. And if they do have those, uh, they could go for a fight, but they're gonna gonna play the same game that El Nexo played before. Um, right, just same. wait and. Wait, go around, get more coins, and then try to go for the turn in while avoiding fights if they can. And just get a little bit more XP in to possibly go for that level advantage. And, and they, there's the turn in. Yeah, they and Alexo completely out of position with this one. <laughs> yeah, they got scared out. They, they got scared out. Arthas forced El Nexo to rotate up top and went straight back down to mid, get the hand in. So this is gonna go get one mid tower, two mid tower. Shh. May not get mid keep, which would be a shame because that's just going to get Mule to straight back up to full health. There's a pretty big wave down bot which has to be dealt with for El Nexo. But they already have uh, 11 coins again, so they're yep. well on their way for the next uh, for the ne next turn. And oh, actually, only 10 because yeah, Black Scorp stole one. <laughs> Black Scorp taxed them a little bit there. It's like, you've got 10, I'm going to take 10% of that. So, boss has now just spawned. They, exact, they see exactly where our Nexo is on the map. They would have had this boss time. Well, they're on the top side of the map. They could bait this one out. Eloon's Grace, uh, not Eloon's Grace, sorry, Moonfire would be the best way to check it alongside the hook, of course, of Stitches. But how do Arthas want to play this? They're moving towards the boss. They're certainly making moves there. Yeah, maybe they just want to bait it out, but... Um, I don't think that El Nexo has the map vision to actually see them going for it. It's it's more or less just a just a hint and that intuition. But they're gonna go for quite a few coins, getting ETC's both these chests. Needs to stage dive. It's too late. Black Scorp first in death. Oh, there's the thundering going straight for Lucifer, but he does make a getaway. And can he run from this for long enough? I think he's gonna be needed in that fight. Falcon catching quite a bit of damage, and there's the CC onto him. Nice little stun, but he blasts them back, and Kulushan may be a little bit over eager there. And looks like this fight should stabilize now that Lucifer is in the fray again. And they're making their return, getting away from him. Um, all the rogues have been popped. Uh, still thinking about engaging. Yeah, back and forth. Lucifer, I feel like, wants to go in here, but he's worried about the follow up. 
that will come in. Well, they ha still had a lot of health, but they were missing stitches, and I think without stitches, yeah. they don't really stand a chance, to be honest. Um, I Are mean, of course, Arthas 18? doesn't have too much sustain, but still, that's a little bit too dangerous. Just the, the amount of damage they can put out in such a short amount of time is way too scary. Now then, are they actually going to go for this or are they going to bait for the second time? Okay, they're going for this one. Uther has Sprint up, he also has Divine Storm in 4 seconds. This healing ward is going to sustain them so well. And Uther is here, ready and waiting. He knows he can take damage, heal himself up. And they're just and happy they to don't want to go in because they know yeah. Divine Storm is up. So this is incredibly dangerous. Oh, great zombie wall though. And Stalk! Ooh, oh, he that's might actually pop. He's sprinting away. Spreading away from this fight. There he goes. Goes back in again. Black Scarf incredibly low. There comes the Divine Storm. And they pick up so many coins. But Ufer is gone. Tirana is gone. And Kunichan being chased back here as well. They're gonna get Andy Landy. But those coins don't even matter to be honest. That's three heroes down. And well, they're gonna have to go back and uh, deal with the boss. But that's still three heroes for only one. Nice pickup here for El Nexo. Yep, El Nexo. They should be able to get the keep. As Arthurs know this, they're sitting on 10 coins for now. They have to base for this one as... Are they going to go for the end? Are they going to end this 2v4? They're trying. Well, the boss is already in their base. I mean, they, they have to do it now. It's only yeah. Gala and Rega. He does have her heroics up. Uh, so does he. And there's the main event not to lose it from. There's no real follow-up. There's does. the Bloodlust. But is it going to be enough? Oh, it is! They need to take out Hammer. Wow. They need to focus Hammer here. Vortex also getting quite a bit of damage down. Oh, wow. Sergeant Hammer does yeah, drop 16, 14, 10%. Oh my gosh, Vortex is gonna get the kill here. And that's El Nexo taking the second series versus Arpis in a, wow, really, wow. really close back door. Yeah. That was like 4 versus 2 against uh, Rhaegar Vala. I feel like they needed to kill Hammer off a little bit sooner than they did, but props to El Nexo for having the persistence and pulling through. Blackheart's Bay really is one of those